Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here, and Google has released an Android O developer preview, and yes, this is just a developer preview, not a beta yet. You will need to manually install it. I'll link to it all down below. I'm also curious what you think Android O is going to be called. Obviously, it's going to be some sort of treat. A lot of people are saying Oreo. Who knows what it's actually going to be? Drop a comment, let me know. Anyways, I have it installed on my Google Pixel right now. I'm going to talk about everything that's new, all the new changes with the Android O developer preview. To begin, here's a quick look at the lock screen. You'll see you do have voice commands in the bottom left and a camera shortcut in the bottom right. That can be changed. I'll talk about that in just a second. First of all, I would like to jump into settings. Scroll down, you'll see settings has gotten an overhaul. We'll talk about that. Go to system, about phone. You'll see Android version, Android O. If you quickly tap on it, here is what the icon looks like as the Easter egg. You can obviously quickly press and hold on it to activate that uh, cat finder uh, easter egg if you'd like to activate it same as it on android 7.0 nougat you'll notice it does come with that pixel launcher i did notice a couple differences however you can swipe up pretty much anywhere on your home screen even on specific apps to reveal that app drawer as you can see and when that app drawer gets revealed those icons down at the bottom turn black which actually did not happen on nougat the pull down bar got a bit of a visual upgrade you'll see when i swipe down twice some icons from those compressed notifications just pop up to let you know there are other ones available as well. You also notice those quick settings got lines to them if there are extra settings. So for Bluetooth, you'll see it will open up within the notification panel. Same with Wi-Fi, do not disturb SIM card as well. Otherwise, they are just simply toggles. It's also worth noting when you pull the status bar down, you'll see the Wi-Fi, mobile, data, battery icon all stay up there along with the battery percentage. So when you do pull down that status bar, you can reveal the battery percentage right away, same as if you pull down twice as well. You'll also see a bit of an updated look to notifications. If they're not showing up, you'll see Allo right here has notifications after I rebooted my phone. If I tap to expand it and minimize, you'll see that icon still not there in the upper left-hand corner. So that does show up as well. You can kind of swipe over and act upon that notification if you'd like to, tap on it to go into it or expand it as well. I think one of my favorite features of this Android O preview is going to be the snoozing feature. So you'll see I have some notifications right here. You can swipe over or press and hold. Swiping over, you'll see those two icons pop up or I can just press and hold on them and you'll see you can go into more settings as well. Now, if I swipe over, you'll see an icon on the far right that you're not used to. If you tap on it, snoozed for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, hour, or don't snooze. So I'm gonna select 15 minutes. You can also press the undo button as well. So that is an option. There's also a new feature for notifications called notification channels. And you'll see here's the Google app right here letting me know what the weather's like. If I press and hold on it, you'll see miscellaneous, one out of two categories for this app. And this is on a per app basis to kind of customize these categories. So if you go to all categories, you'll see one of them says make sound and pop up on screen. And this is where you can change the importance. You can show it silently, make sound, pop up on screen, no sound or visual interruption. You can customize all sorts of things in terms of notifications from a specific app. And of course, they can be categorized as well. I've also noticed ambient display got a bit of an update. So if you double tap the screen, you can activate ambient display. There's a setting for that. And then you'll see it just shows a clock and some app icons where if you tap on the app icons, it says at the bottom, tap again to open. So you double tap, tap on them, tap again to open. And then if you do that, it will go ahead and expand those notifications. So when your uh, ambient display is active, you can't just go ahead and touch on the screen and it will activate those notifications. You actually have to double tap on those icons. Incoming notifications are also handled differently. So you'll see I'm gonna send myself a Hangouts message and right away you'll notice it vibrates and it gives me who it's from. Hey, I can auto reply if I tap on it, it says tap again to open. I can open up the app or obviously I can quick reply as well. And if you don't act upon it right away, it goes away back into your standard notification pull down. Going into the app drawer, you'll see there is now something called a files app, which is pretty much the exact same as your downloads app, you see you have your drive, your images, video, recent files. So kind of like a file manager just called files now. Let's go ahead and go into that updated settings screen. And it is updated, it's not necessarily categorized, it's very short, so they really made them compact on the amount of options you do have to select. So they've added more options once you go into it. So, and of course, a visual overhaul on them as well. So there's just Wi-Fi, nothing really crazy out of the blue. Uh, connected devices, you'll see that's where CAST, NFC is printing as well. App and notifications, a ton of different ones. You can go ahead and customize which permissions are used on a per app basis, along with your notification preferences. So if we go into that, see so you can pulse the light, 
on the lock screen and swipe for notifications. This is where you can use that fingerprint scanner to swipe down. You see that notification just popped up. You have special access as well. And here's one I wanna talk about, picture in picture. So you see Google Play services and YouTube have this option. I can't show it off yet. I can't get it to work even in a YouTube video. I can't get picture in picture to work. Um, I will do an updated video in the future once I can get that to work. Obviously you need other apps to actually allow it for uh, developers to implement it. I'll talk about that once it comes out, so make sure you click that subscribe button. Now backing out of that, you also have battery, and this has been a bit of an update, just kind of a visual overhaul. You can activate battery saver, adaptive brightness, sleep, and then of course app usage since charge, and it, right down at the bottom here it says device usage, it just lets you know how much your screen usage has been, screen consumption, and mobile network scanning as well. So just gives you some quick updates on estimated time left, if you tap on it, lets you know a bit of a breakdown on what's using how much. Next up is display, and right away you'll see some very basic ones up at the top, and you have a drop down for more advanced settings. Night light's still there, you can customize when it turns on and off. Going down to advanced, anything out of the ordinary, device theme, and I haven't tried this out yet, I'm uh, going to give some first impressions kind of, so I'm gonna tap on inverted, and it says restart, so I'm gonna reboot my phone. Let's check out what inverted looks like. Also, as a side note, it looks like they added Powered by Android down at the bottom of this Google Splash screen. Mine has a padlock because I unlocked the bootloader to flash this developer preview, but Powered by Android, I don't believe was there before on the Pixel. Boot it back up, seems like inverted brings more white, so you'll see there's no black background to these icons. Uh, just lots more white. Let's go back into display and switch it back to pixel. And I'm guessing that's default theme is just going to be the standard one as shown in the beginning of this video. Okay, boot it back up and you'll see back to the standard look. So really no inverted theme. A lot of people were asking about that. Uh, I don't see one. Anyways, continuing it on, you'll see there's more advanced settings and sounds. Really nothing out of the ordinary there. Going, Jumping into storage, you can free up space. Manage storage where you have your smart storage to back up photos via Google Photos, you have that option. Security, you'll see just a bit of a visual overhaul. I'm not exactly sure why that just opened. It might be a little buggy if you do decide to install. It is a developer preview after all. Um, and you'll see really nothing, screen pinning is still there. Uh, user accounts, accessibility, um, you have a bunch of different options there. Now there's a couple one, you'll see system instead of about phone, it is called system. There's support for your uh, chat support, your Google settings. But let's go ahead and jump into system as well, which is where your about phone is. But I did activate developer options, nothing too crazy. You'll see sRGB still is there. Now, I did activate system UI tuner, which is under these system settings. To do so, you just press and hold on this settings icon right there. Anyways, system UI tuner. Here is some new customizations. Definitely check these out. So first of all, lock screen. You have a left and right shortcut. As you saw at the beginning of this video, by default, it's a voice search and a camera shortcut. But let's go ahead and customize these. So left shortcut, let's launch Chrome. Right shortcut, you can launch a bunch of different ones. One that I found pretty funny was the, uh, let's see, launch photos. Feel Lucky opens up the Photos app. You can free space. There's so many different shortcuts that you can have. You can compose an app recently played music just check out how many different things you can do and of course this can only expand and get more especially on a per app basis because your developers will need to go ahead i accidentally just tapped one called new list but you'll see there are so many even lyft had a couple right there i did download that so launching that will be an option so let's add launch clock for now and you'll see they get added right away you have the clock in the bottom right and chrome in the bottom left so opening that up go ahead and unlock it is buggy Keep that in mind so you'll see. And of course, it is in System UI Tuner. But now when I unlock it, you'll see, let's go ahead and swipe. There's that clock app open. So you can now kind of customize those shortcuts that got added. Finally, you can customize these navigation buttons down at the bottom. You see you have an extra left, extra right button, and layout. So you have a more compact layout, which I don't think I'd like. You have a left-leaning one, maybe if you're left-handed, or a right-leaning one, which may be for better for bigger devices uh, to help with one-handed mode. So you do have some options there or just back to normal. Extra left button type. So here's the ones that you can add. Clipboard, which is really cool. I'll show that off in a second. Keyboard switcher and key code as well. So if I add clipboard, you'll see that gets added right there. Tapping on it really doesn't do anything. I don't think I have anything in my clipboard. Extra right button, same. Uh, you can add those three in the right. Let's test out this clipboard feature. Okay, so I'm in the Google Keep app, so I'm gonna press and hold on testing and copy it, add it to my clipboard, and it seems like this button really doesn't do anything. Tapping on it does nothing, but when I do tap on it, 
uh, you'll see it actually brings like it seems like you need to tr click and drag it let's see if you can get a closer look at that but it seems like it adds it where you need to click and drag that specific icon so you can kind of drag it around but it doesn't seem to do anything but that would be a nice little addition if you have a universal uh, cut copy paste clipboard right there there's also a lot of behind the scenes update to android O, and i will talk about more of those in the description i'll just link to an article down below so click on that if you want to see more of the behind the scene things in terms of improving battery life you have autofill apis um, like i mentioned that picture in picture i can't show it off yet but i will do an updated video some more adaptive icons just click the link below if you're interested in checking out more information on the android o update but that would be about it that's just an overview about all that's new with this first developer preview more videos to come click that subscribe button you can also follow me on various social media all links down in the description below and as always guys thank you very much for watching